Hello, and thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Rowan, a Partner Marketing Manager with AWS Worldwide Public Sector. I am joined here today by Crystal Hare. Crystal is a Senior AWS Solutions Architect with Infinitiv, an AWS Consulting Partner. Crystal, thanks for coming. Excited to be here. Our topic of conversation today is building in security and resiliency into a modern microservices architecture. And with that, let's turn to the whiteboard. Sure. So one thing we're seeing across a lot of our federal partners, or a lot of our pu public sector partners, is the move to a microservices architecture, as well as a decoupled application ecosystem. What that does give you the ability to build in what one of Infinitive's core values is security from day one. Uh, so you start to layer in the security, both from the data store, the microservice, the application, and the entire ecosystem layer. One of the things it allows you to do is to pick the, secure, the storage device that goes with the function, um, to contain the function within the microservice and create that need to know type atmosphere where the data that's contained within the microservice is only what that microservice needs to know. The data shared from the application is only what other applications need to know. Well, then you will have the concept of a data sync. This is what we're seeing more and more for that resiliency piece. So as messages are passed between the applications, those messages sync into an S3 for resilient storage so that if a microservice or an application were to go down, they can spin back up and catch up on all the messages they may have missed in the event hub. If an application was to join after the ecosystem is stood up, they can catch up on all the other messages based on going to that data sync. So in the public sector, uh, there's a big focus on compliance, whether it's education with FERPA or healthcare with HIPAA. How does this architecture ensure that student data and patient data is secure? So again, going back to that concept of need to know, that least privilege. The microservice that needs the information is the only one that has the information. So where that student PII or that patient PII may reside, it sits within the microservice. It doesn't sit in a large data warehouse that might be vulnerable to threat. And so for bad actors, we see that local government, K-12 schools, and colleges are often targets of ransomware and other targeted attacks. How does this help? Again, going back to the fact that we don't have that large data warehouse anymore, we're getting more to a decoupled, dispersed environment. Each microservice is accessed via an API. The API only gives you access to the information within that microservice. So if that one microservice was compromised in one way, they're only getting a piece of the information. They're not getting access to the data warehouse and getting a large chunk of information that they can then exploit. And so what are the two biggest takeaways here today? So the takeaways you're going to run into are the modern application architecture and the microservices architecture allow you to layer in security from day one for privacy and compliance, and it allows you to break apart those data stores to avoid attacks for ransomware where they're going to grab that large data warehouse. Great. Crystal, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to us on Twitter, and we invite you to visit our Raise the Bar on Data Protection page and view the associated content.